Well, good afternoon, guys and gals. It's me, George, the Shade Tree Fix-It Man. It's just afternoon time, and I'm just getting out to the shop and resuming my process of working on the wiring. It's like I need to back you up just a hair. There we go. And uh, I, I started doing this without you, and I thought, well, you know, some other folks might benefit from seeing how this is done. What I'm doing is I'm taking my plug here that will go into the back of my ignition switch and I'm rearranging the wires so that they match up with the ignition switch that we're going to do. And if you look real carefully here, you'll notice that uh, right here on this plug it has this little raised portion here and all that does is it catches on a little nub on the inside of the switch and I'm going to bend it back just a little bit here so it'll get a good positive connection when it goes back in again to get that out of there what you do is you take a really small screwdriver let me slide this down small straight slot like this one here see that he said yeah if you get your thumb out of the way we can see it if you move down and you can see all the gobbledygook that I have on the screwdriver just from pulling out three wires so far and that gobbledygook is solidified grease that they put in these so all you do is you put the your screwdriver into the plug end. If you look at the plug, you'll notice that it has a raised area above, and that's where that little notch goes in there. So you take your screwdriver and you stick it into that raised area just above your plug, you stuff it in there like that, and then you simply pull. See if I can do this so you can see it. I'm trying to film it and do it at the same time is not the simplest thing. You simply pull that plug right back because what you have done by pushing that screwdriver in there is you have collapsed that little tang on the top. So what's happening when you push that screwdriver in there from the front you're pushing it in and you're flattening that tab right down and that makes it so you can pull it out so it disengages the little locking tab inside well here we are guys and gals uh, it is all wired up except for the charging system uh, I rewired my switch and changed the wiring around I still may have to do a little bit of a change it depends on the wiring diagram that I look at I have three different diagrams and I'm trying to figure out how to make this work the best because it's not exactly the same as wiring a car because your ignition system uh, is works basically just on a ground and all you have is uh, this wire here that comes out of your coil and when you turn your key on it removes the ground when you turn the key off it makes it ground out so that's what stops your motor so you have to keep that in mind so we have that uh, wired in there and we have the wire going through this piece of copper coil and then right through the firewall and it comes out here and we've got a um, spade connectors so everything can be disconnected under here I use spade connectors on a lot of stuff let me show you what's working I guess that's the best thing to do and um, to do that I'm going to put the dashboard up in place temporarily because um, I have this is a wood dashboard so I have to have ground wires for everything you can see ground wires here and more there and more there and more over there on 
every one of these connectors, uh, hangers for the dashboard, I have ground wires. But I don't have a ground wire. What I should do is have a ground wire going all the way across, but I don't at this point. Um, once it's bolted in place, it's no problem because the body is grounded. Okay, here we go for our shaky cam. Now the first thing you'll notice, we have a fuse right here so that all my power goes through the fuse before it goes to the ignition switch and before it goes anywhere else. So when I turn the key on, this light here lights up and you'll notice there's another light over there but it's not lit up yet until I turn my lights on and that stays on for both headlights and taillights and watch this can you see that yep and let me take you back here get my tripod out of the way yep -er, we got taillights yeehaw now, oh while I'm back here I don't have my brake light mounted yet but here is my brake light and it's going to get mounted up here somewhere like that how's them apples huh there or maybe it'll get all the way up at the top like that I have a hard time because they got my lift all the way up well, I think that's one of those places is where the brake light is going to go. No directionals. These are just running lights here. All right. And so you can see the headlight. And I'm going to have to get different bulbs because these don't slide in all the way. The bulbs that go in here have to have a notch or a little rib thing on each side. And these regular headlights have three buttons on them. So I'm going to have to look online. But that's the way that's going to look. Let me turn the lights off before I kill our battery. It's probably pretty low anyway because I've been um, messing with it quite a bit. Oh, and let me see. Let me turn the lights off here for a second so you can see the dash lights, man. The dash lights. You know what I'm saying? Huh? Even our gauges light up. Yep, not very bright, that's for sure. That one shows up pretty good. That one there, not so much, but they are working. And they go off, they come on with the tail lights. And they stay on with the headlights as well. Yep. So let me turn my overhead lights back on here before I kill myself. Hope I don't trip on anything coming over here. It's dark 30 outside. Um, so yeah. We have them all wired up. And watch this. Huh? No fuel in there, so we can't start it, but it's all wired and ready to go. So all I got to finish wiring now is doing my uh, charging system. So yeah, we're very close. Um, I'm hoping tomorrow, if I get that charging system wired in, then I'll be ready to... Uh, Give it a start. What do you think of them apples? Let's see, I get a little tidying up to do here with my wires. I don't, that's not cool looking like that. And I don't need that much slack, so I think probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that wire and put a new end on it and just have it run right down and hook on here. And this is going to get tied up down in here too. Um, actually, I could probably sneak it inside uh, one of these doo flickies here. Oh, speaking of those doo flickies, 
let me show you up inside here. I didn't show you too much while I had to dash off, but you can see I have um, holders all the way up, all the way across, and the green and yellow are for the headlights, the brown and white are for the taillights. One wire is hot, one wire is ground. Yep. And uh, those, this side here is the one from the headlight on this side. And all of the taillights are running through here. And on the other side, you can see I have another green and yellow coming up there. That's for the headlight on that side there. So uh, we have our new... Um, yeah, we have our new uh, reverse lockout installed, and I'm pretty happy with the way it's going to work. I think it'll be just fine and dandy. Somebody asked me if you could do actual shifting with this shifter in here, and yeah, you could. See, you could, um, but it ain't cool like having a high shifter, you know. So, um, and our, you know, that's one thing I haven't checked. I wonder if that's going to be right under my leg. Hmm. Maybe, maybe not. I guess we'll find out, won't we? I've decided to, uh, I'm almost done here now. I have my throttle cable going through the firewall, which was a requirement because I needed enough loop and I couldn't get it the other way. But this doesn't work very nicely with this uh, ribbed cord, uh, ribbed caging, and it's fine with the solid wire running inside, but I'm using a um, stranded wire for my throttle cable. And I think I'm going to go back to the black one that was on there. And maybe what I'll do is where it comes through out here, maybe I can uh, put some red on there. be cool if I could do it on this one, but I'll tell you what. That's some tight fit down in there, getting all of that in. And it was a major pain to do it. And you have to do it after the body is on. Um... Well, actually, I did most of that before I put the body down in. And to try and do it now that the body is on and mounted down, that's going to be nigh into impossible. So I'm not going to take that off so that I can slide a piece of red tubing over it, you know. We'll just leave it the way it is, you know. It's the way it is. And it has to be in a big loop like that because uh, if you get it too tight, then it won't work. So, but it, it does work, and uh, you can see it functioning just like that. It's working. So that's where we're at today. We're really close to starting it, and there she is in all her glory. Thanks for watching, for commenting. And for subscribing, oh yeah, I still got to put on my radiator support rod. All the way. Whoa. That'll scare the daylights out of you, won't it? Yep.